I kind of f***ed up my skincare routine <laughs> by doing things that I shouldn't. My skincare routine, my sunscreens, and the things that I slather onto my face, and we are not sugarcoating it because your acne big sister has not been following her own rules of switching out products once every 28 days. <laughs> I have not been isolating my variables, but I have a few things that I've been bouncing around with and absolutely loving, and I must say, I feel like my skin is pretty happy with me. I feel like it's in pretty good condition. My body acne, as we're kind of heading into warmer weather, is definitely flaring up, but we will talk about that in another video. For now, let's get to what I'm putting on or taking off of my face. And the first that I've actually been using for a ton of time. Should we start with morning or evening? Let's drop a bombshell. I cleanse my face in the evening, but not in the morning. My evening skincare routine is so amazing that I just don't want to wash all of that off and down the drain. And I don't sweat horrendously overnight. I don't feel that I need that. So when I wake up, sometimes I will splash some water on my face. Occasionally, I will use a toner, a non-exfoliating one. Uh, this is the one from Pyongyang Yule that I'm obsessed with. This is like, if you could imagine grape jelly, but just make it liquid. It has amino acids. There's nothing exfoliating about it. It is so silky and hydrating and I can just pat this on my face in the morning. And that makes me feel so happy and ready to go. My morning routine is literally two to three steps. This is often one of them. But after applying this essence toner from Pyongyang Yule, I just go straight to my vitamin C. This is what I've been using during the day. These are the vitamin C capsules from Beauty Pie, the super active ones. I love these. They also have the resveratrol ones, but I've only been using the little orange vitamin C ones. The reason why is because you can take these on the go. I struggled with acne all my life. I struggled with picking, which turned into self-harm. And let me just say, there's something about popping pimples that I just love. Dr. Sandra Lee MD gets me, okay? If you're a pimple popper, you get it. And these little things help me pop these instead of my skin. They're made from biodegradable little packages, so they're not bad for the environment. Even this is like a glass capsule. I keep rebuying these because they're my favorite. Um, they also feel very pillowy. This vitamin C serum, it's almost ribbony. Like imagine like a silk ribbon or a satin ribbon. That is what this feels like. And I apply just one of these in the morning. It's actually shocking how much product is in this little bloop. But remember when calculating for 3D containers, volume is cubed. And um, it's amazing that this actually works all over my face and even a little bit down my neck. I apply this in the morning. Um, there is this vitamin C serum that I f love. This is from Dear Claire's, probably one of my favorite vitamin C serums. Uh, this one gives like a hot flash flush to the face, but we'll talk about the other vitamin C serums I use in the evening. Because I was using this, again, you know how when people are going through menopause, you get like this hot flush to your body, or if you step into a sauna, or if you're in an air conditioned building and you step outside of the air conditioned building, and it's just like this hot flush, that is what this feels like when it goes on, and then it dissipates, and it feels so Good. I love this. I've purchased at least three of them and I've stopped using this recently because I'm back on the beauty pie capsules. But if you're looking for a good vitamin C serum, we've actually done an entire rundown of vitamin C's. There's also the Jumiso vitamin C that has other vitamins in it that I've been loving. Wander Beauty came out with a new one. All of those are over there. And again, that's why my entire routine comes with a caveat. It is literally my job to try new products and I do switch things, at least right now, I've been switching things up a lot more than I would prefer to. But this is a good one if you are looking for a good vitamin C. And then I don't even use a moisturizer. I go straight in with my sunscreen. And again, I've been switching these mother up like it is musical chairs on my face with my SPF application. This is my absolute favorite if I'm looking for something dewy. This is the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel from Isntree. And if I want the hydration and the dew of hyaluronic acid without it destroying my sunscreen, this is it. But I have kind of been bouncing back and forth between this and my dearly beloved Dr. Sam's sunscreen. This is probably one of my favorite sunscreens of all time. This is the Daily Sunscreen. It's an SPF 50. I just go on and on and on and on about this, but like, if you could imagine a sun protective creme brulee, that is what this is. It is so good. It has shea butter. It protects against UVA and UVB rays and it goes in completely flawless. And yes, this hydrates my face on the days that I'm a little bit drier, but it doesn't leave you with that dewy look. So it's actually, it's not mattified by any means, but it's not overly dewy. And this daily sunscreen is just it. I know that it's a little bit more expensive than most traditional sunscreens, but like if you're looking for a sunscreen, the SPF that is truly your BFF, this has got to be one of my favorites. Dr. Sam is the founder of Dr. 
for Sam's. She's also uh, in the UK. She has a cosmetic dermatology practice. She's here on YouTube. Even removing the wonders that is her personality and her channel from this brand, one of the best sunscreens that I've ever used. If you're worried about pricing, I would buy this and then use this as a primary application. And then if you wanted to reapply, you could use like sunscreen sprays or other things like that. And um, one of my favorite daily sunscreens, hands down. But is that it for sunscreen? Of course not. I've also been using this and you're probably like, Cassandra, what is that? Is it the ordinary? No, 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 my loves. This is a lab sample. This is from a product that I got to try before it was released. It's very exciting to be recognized by brands and to be asked either to try, to test, or even to consult. A lot of people don't know that I've worked in cosmetic chemistry and worked on formulations since 2016, but that is a very long, very sad story for another day. But this is from Zitsticka. By the time I post this video, this will have come out so I can talk about this now. But this is the mega shade from Zitsticka. And I have been using the lab sample of it before it gets all packaged up pretty nicely. This is a really cool sunscreen. It's like a sunscreen serum. And how I've been using this basically is testing it out on my skin. And on the days that I don't want my fluffy creme brulee moisturizing sunscreen, this is like a sunscreen serum that I have been testing out. So I cannot vouch for this right now. I have to try it out a little bit more, have to see it in its full glory, and probably have to isolate my variables and try it on my acne prone skin to make sure that it is okay for my acne. But um, this is something that is in the works that is very exciting and transparency as always. This is something I have been putting on my face. And that is basically it for my morning routine. Now, sometimes as you can see, I will put on mascara or a little bit of brows and stuff. So that is when at the end of the night, you know we've got to take all of that plus our sunscreen off. This is something I've been using for over a year now from Stylevana. This is the All Clean Balm from Hemish. I keep rebuying it. It's like a little cloud for your skin and it comes out this white chunky chunky and then it melts down into this cleansing milk. I've been thinking of switching to like a cleansing oil just to see how that goes, uh, especially since I liked this a little bit more in the winter, but this has been a tried and true in my routine for, yeah, I just keep coming back to it and I love it. To keep my acne at bay, I have been using my Inky List Salicylic Acid Cleanser. It's inexpensive. It gets the grease off my face. I don't recommend it for dry skin, but I love it for my skin. This is also something that I've recommended to some acne warriors. We are doing exciting secret projects where I'm having FaceTime calls with them and chats and sending products. Very excited. But I've recommended this to many of those people because it works. There are other salicylic cleansers out there that I like as well, but this one is good. When it's actually in stock at Sephora, I buy them in like three to five. And I'm sure other people are as well. And I think that that's why it's constantly being sold out. But I put it on my face. I even put it on my chest and my back. Usually I use benzoyl peroxide on my chest and my back, but that's for a body care routine. I love this shit. Works on my skin. Gets whatever is left over from this off and it helps me with my acne. And then it's time to tone and I have been switching things up. You know that I love the Ordinary's glycolic acid toner, but there's actually no Ordinary in my routine right now other than the peeling solution, which we'll talk about, but shocker, right? I've been playing around with different toners. There's the PHA toner and the glycolic acid toner. This is even more gentle than the Ordinary's and this is even more gentle than this. So while I like these, I also got this um, last year. I used an entire bottle of this. This is from Wish Trend. This is mandelic acid and this is the 5% skin in prep water, I actually find this to be really, really soothing. So I do use this almost every single day, but if I want something a little bit more intense, that's when I pop in with these guys. And again, you could use the PHA in the morning. I personally don't. I would only use the glycolic at night and they actually have these little things on the back that say that as well. This you could use morning or evening, but again, I'm big on isolating your variables. If you're breaking out and you're switching up three different toners, which toner is breaking you out? Who knows? <laughs> that is why I recommend trying one thing at a time. But for me, I I'm not practicing what I preach and I'm fully aware of that. And this is what I've been doing. <laughs> now also, I absolutely love this brand Phyla. I think that the technology that they have, I think that their formulas, I think that the story behind the brand and just everything about it is amazing. However, I understand that if you buy the entire set as like a three-step set, it's a little bit expensive and I get that. So I have been trying just the Fortify Serum. I feel like this is my favorite product from the line and I have been trying it in isolation. So just trying this and seeing if it works without the other products. And while that was going well at first, it really hasn't stayed steady. So I kind of stopped using this alone 
and I actually almost want to do a test where I use just this without the other two Phyla products to see if you can get away with just purchasing this and not the other ones because I do think that this is really the hero product this has the bacteriophages in it this has the probiotic serum but you know it is sold in a three-step system because this actually works alongside the moisturizer and they kind of piggyback off each other and I get that from a scientific perspective but you know sometimes theory is different than application and when I apply this I'm going to be retesting it but this is one of my favorite serums if you are a skincare nerd this is one of the best things that I can recommend if you have a little bit of extra money and if you're not super budget strapped and you want to try something new and fun this is probably one of the coolest products that I ever came across last year and I am so happy that I did now the reason that I can't stick to this bitch is because of these I have been playing around with these and even another retinol serum, which we'll talk about in a second. These right here are vitamin C blends and I've been kind of toying around with these during the evening. I've also actually been using these a lot on my chest. This is the 15% vitamin C and EGF serums. A lot of vitamin C's tend to oxidize and tend to sting. This is actually an SPF 15 that does not sting that bad. It's relatively new from the inky list and I've actually been very, very pleased with this. I only used it at night because I wasn't sure how bad it was going to sting during the day. Now, is it my favorite vitamin C in the entire world? No, but I am really, really, really loving it. And you can use this day or night. Now, there's also the theory or the myth that you can't use retinoids during the day. Not true. You can use retinoids during the day and you can use retinoids and vitamin C. The thing is that retinoids perform better at a more like skin neutral pH, so around a 5.5. And vitamin C penetrates better at a low pH, so meaning a more acidic formula. However, if you find a formula that can combines them both, they are stabilized and work well together. This is from Beauty Pie. I first tried this product last year. I did pick it up again and I have been enjoying it. This is something that even though I was using it at night, I think I'm going to switch to the day. I was primarily using this on my chest and it worked really well. Retinoids actually do not make you photosensitive. They increase your uh, epidermal growth factor and how quickly your skin cells turn over. So retinoids actually plump the skin a little bit. They don't make you photosensitive, but sunlight does degrade retinol or retinoids. So you should make sure that, you know, you are using SPF with them and preferably at night, but it's not detrimental during the day. So that is something I will be switching up as well as this. This is the Sandra Lee MD Retinol Clarifying Serum. Sandra Lee MD, as you know, is Dr. Pimple Popper. I love her and popping pimples. But this retinoid serum, it was okay. It's just not the most potent and it's not my favorite. I do like it. It goes onto the skin nice. I think it's worth the money at Target, but like there's nothing about it that just blows my brain into pieces. And so is it something that I'm going to continue reaching for and obsess over? Probably not. I mean, I like it, but it's not the best thing since sliced bread. But I have been switching it up in change for this. Now this is a prescription product, so I want to make that clear. Obviously the prescription product is going to blow this out of the water. And guess what it does? <laughs> this is from Apostrophe and this is custom blended to me. So this isn't going to be the same for everybody. But for me, this is tretinoin, this is tranexamic acid, and this is spironolactone. And um, we've done an entire video on this before. I have been using it. The one thing I've noticed is that sometimes, depending, it can be a little bit grainy. But overall, if I just kind of mesh this into my skin, it works in really, really well. Because I was using the retinoid before I switched to this, it hasn't made me like overly dry. I didn't need to titrate a ton and yes it is prescribed by a doctor and this is an online pharmacy so I didn't get this from one of the derms that I work with or the clinic I didn't go in and see a doctor but they did look at all my stuff uh, you know on the internet and I have tried this and I love it. And this is one of the only ways to get spironolactone topically. Normally it's an oral medication as a diuretic, but topically you don't have to worry about some of those potential side effects. I get that it's a prescription. It is affordable and I have been putting it all over my freaking face. Then we got to talk about moisturizers. There are two that I've kind of been playing around with. The May Love moisturizer I just ran out of. This is the Night Renewer. It is definitely a good one. It's a base of shea butter, but it also has glycolic acid. So it's nice and exfoliating. And again, I would only use this at night, but when I wake up in the morning, my skin just looks glowy. Now this is a little bit less hydrating than this, and this is the Wake Up Beautiful from Pacifica. It has quinoa, it has floral stem cells, it has mushroom. If you don't like fragrance or if you don't like plant actives, then this won't be for you. But this is a nice, thick moisturizing cream, and it's called a sleep mask. But you know what a sleep mask is? It's an occlusive moisturizer that you wear overnight, and it's at Ulta. You can get it inexpensively. Of course, it's vegan and cruelty free, and even Pacifica, the brand, it's run by by a lady and her sister and um, they're up in Portland, Oregon and they actually donate to clean water funds. This is so nice and if you want something a little thick for nighttime use, this
this is amazing and that's why when I wake up in the morning I don't need to like strip my face with a new cleanser because this stuff works so well for me now sometimes I also use this this is the Derma the Dermalogica retinol clearing oil this is one of the best oils if you have acne I know that it's a prestige price I think it's like $80 you can get it on sale this is one of the best oils I have ever put on my face I've been using it for over a year and I love it it's a nice lightweight oil and that's because it is jojoba oil it also has retinoids in it and it also has salicylic acid which is literally an acne person's skincare best friend it goes on really nicely it's not overly occlusive um, and sometimes I actually use this as a serum and sometimes I use this over a moisturizer now it's not all the time I've gone through at least six bottles of this stuff but I do continue using it because it is that good. I know that some Dermalogica products are a little bit hit and miss for me. They also have like an age defy type of clearing retinoid thing. This just knocks it out of the park though. Jojoba, salicylic acid, retinoid. Mwah. And oh, do I admit this? Yes, I do. I got this a year ago and you know what it is? It's a overpriced moisturizer and you know what I don't like it as an eye cream and I don't like it as a moisturizer either this was not a product for me and I'm including it here even though it's no longer part of my routine because I think it's important to talk about the things that don't work maybe I will retire this to my elbows or to my large toe or my crusty ass ankles but um this uber youth eye cream she tried she wanted to enjoy it it was not for me we have a video on eye creams that I do actually recommend there are some people who know that eye creams are overpriced moisturizers and they still want an eye cream and if that's you would highly recommend that video but the sis is not it now actually I didn't realize this video was so long I could talk for another 30 minutes about my favorite spot treatments my favorite face masks some of the patches that I use on my face but I think I'm gonna do this in a part two because I just talked a lot so how about I film a second video as a follow-up to this it'll be right there and right here if it isn't right here and you're like one of the first butterflies because you have notifications on yell at me in the comments to put the little helicopter dude dad right here please and thank you but you can click right here to see the tools the devices the face masks that I use on my routine including the one ordinary product that I have in my routine and just remember in the meantime as you're clicking over here to stay hydrated use this as an opportunity to reapply your SPF and always be beautiful both inside and out I love you and I can't wait to see you in this next video <laughs> love you guys bye